హలో ఎవ్రీవన్ వెల్కమ్ టు మై ఛానల్ దిస్ ఈస్ కరుణ టీచింగ్ ద కోర్స్ కంప్యూటర్ ఆర్కిటెక్చర్ అండ్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్ ఫోర్త్ యూనిట్ కంటైన్స్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ టాపిక్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ విచ్ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో వీఆర్ కాన్సన్ట్రేటింగ్ ఆన్ హ్యాండ్లింగ్ మల్టిపుల్ ఐవో డివైజెస్ లెట్ ఎస్ సీ హౌ ప్రొసెసర్ విల్ హ్యాండిల్ మల్టిపుల్ ఐవో డివైజెస్ హియర్ మల్టిపుల్ ఐవో డివైజెస్ may be connected to the processor and the memory through a bus these devices may be capable of generating interrupt requests suppose device x may request an interrupt while device y being served or several devices may request interrupts at the same time this gives rise to a number of questions how can the processor recognize which device requesting an interrupt each device has its own isr each isr is having its own address how can the processor obtain the starting address of the appropriate interrupt service routine in each case here isr full form of isr is interrupt service routine next question should a device be allowed to interrupt the processor while another interrupt being serviced coming to the next question how should two or more simultaneous interrupt request be handled by the processor let us see the solutions for all these questions or we can say all these questions can be solved by polling mechanism vector interrupts interrupt nesting dig chain scheme arrangement of priority groups let us see one by one so the way of approach for solving these problems vary from one computer to another here this is the previous topics diagram here intr1 intr2 and so on intr n means intr interrupt request 1 coming from io device 1 interrupt request 2 coming from io device 2 and so on from io device n okay so here if the two devices have activated the line intr at the same time so here many io devices are connected to the processor through a common interrupt request line okay so if the two devices have activated the line intr at the same time additional information is needed to identify the particular device it must be possible to break the tie and select one of the two requests for service so the information is available in the status register of the device that information is needed to determine whether a device is requesting an interrupt is available in its status register the simplest way to identify the interrupting device is to have the isr poll all the io devices are connected to the bus okay for example status register is a 8 bit register that contains 8 bits each bit of that status register is assigned to each io device here uh, because of availability of 8 bits only 8 io devices can be connected to the processor through the common interrupt request line okay now if irq is equal to 1 due to first device okay so the irq first bit of status register is assigned to the first io device okay so if irq is equal to 1 due to first device that should be serviced first after completion of this the second request can be serviced likewise to identify the io devices interrupt service routine can pull all the io devices 
connected to the bus okay so this polling mechanism is easy but time consuming or we can say the disadvantage of this polling mechanism is the spending time to interrogate the irq bits of all the devices that may not be requesting any service now the alternative approach is to use vectored interrupts let us see vectored interrupts it is a interrupt handling mechanism in this approach the time involved in the polling process is reduced let us see how it will reduce okay here this is the processor this is the io devices each io device has its own isr okay so processor executing main program the io device sending interrupt request to the processor okay if processor sends the interrupt technology to the io device then io device sends its own address let us see in detail a device requesting an interrupt can identify itself by sending a special code okay this is the special code to a to the processor over the data bus okay this enables the processor to identify individual devices even if they share a single interrupt line here code is starting address of the isr for that device see for example here io device 1 having its own code that is isr1 io device 2 having its own code isr2 next this is the third routine for third io device okay so each isr having their own starting address okay isr1 starts at 2a location okay isr2 having the starting address 3a isr3 having starting address 4a okay so here these addresses 2a 3a 4a of addresses for isrs are stored in some memory locations see these are the memory locations 2a stored in first location 3a stored in next location so these memory locations called vector table okay so we can say vector table contains the starting addresses of the isrs see here io device is ready to perform its isr it sends interrupt request to the processor for interrupting the processor okay then processor sends the interrupt technology to the io device so processor reads the starting address called interrupt vector so after receiving acknowledge signal from the processor io device send the interrupt vector code over the data bus using the bus control signals to ensure that devices do not interfere with each other when a device sends an interrupt request the processor sometimes may not be ready to receive the interrupt vector code immediately because the processor completing the execution of current instruction which may require the use of the bus so the interrupting device must wait to put data on the data bus only when the processor is ready to receive it when the processor is ready to receive the interrupt vector code it activates the interrupt technology line okay now the io device responds by sending its interrupt vector this is interrupt vector to a and turning off the interrupt request signal that means interrupt request signal will be disabled okay likewise processor can identify the io devices with their starting addresses of isrs okay now let us move on to the next technique that is interrupt nesting in this mechanism io devices should be arranged in a 
priority structure so let us say this is the processor and i would device 1 2 and so on p okay each device having their own interrupt request signal previous case we have seen only single interrupt request line okay so all the io devices share that request line and acknowledge signal okay now here each device having their own interrupt request signal and acknowledge signal okay so here all the devices are arranged in a priority structure an interrupt request from a high priority device should be accepted while the processor is servicing another request from a lower priority device okay or we can say the processor accepts the interrupts only from the devices that have priorities higher than its own and executes isr for some device disables interrupts from devices having lower priority however interrupt request from higher devices will continue to be accepted okay for example all the requests are sending by all the devices at the same time okay the, uh, out of all those devices device to having highest priority then processor accept the interrupt request from this highest priority than the others and sends acknowledge signal to that highest priority device okay so this processor's priority is usually encoded in a few bits of the processor status register it can be changed by program instruction that write into the program status register here priority is encoded in a few bits of the processor status register multiple priority scheme can be implemented easily by using separate interrupt request and interrupt acknowledge lines for each device as shown in figure okay here interrupt request 1 to interrupt request p interrupt acknowledge 1 to interrupt acknowledge p okay so each of the interrupt request line is assigned a different priority level interrupt requests received over these lines are sent to a priority arbitration circuit in the processor okay so this is the priority arbitration circuit or we can say priority resolver a request is accepted only if it has higher priority level than that the currently assigned to the processor okay so priority resolver or priority arbitration circuit resolves the priorities among all the devices okay this is how the interrupt requests are handled by the processor on priority based okay for example device to having highest priority device one having next highest priority so first processor accepts device two and then processor jumps to the device one okay like that processor accepts the request on priority based let us see digis chain scheme okay so let us consider the problem of simultaneous arrivals of interrupt request from two or more devices if the devices share an interrupt request line same interrupt request line then how does the processor decide which interrupt request to accept okay this problem can be solved by connecting all the devices in a digi chain fashion okay so here all the devices device 1 device 2 device and so on device n are connected in a digi chain fashion devices share the same interrupt request line and interrupt acknowledgement line okay here intr is common to all the devices inta is connected in a digi chain fashion okay such that inta signal propagates serially through all these devices okay so when several devices rise an interrupt request intr is activated 
the processor responds by sending the intl line to 1 this signal is received by device 1 first device 1 passes this signal on to the device 2 only if it does not require any service so the device that is electrically closes here device 1 is closed to the processor that's what obviously device 1 having highest priority then next highest priority goes to device 2 so the main advantage of the priority level scheme is that it allows the processor to accept interrupt request from some devices but not from others depending upon their priorities so these two schemes priority based circuit and digi chain circuit may be combined to produce the more general structure as shown in this figure so here when iowa devices were organized into a priority structure each device had its own interrupt request and interrupt technology line when iowa devices are organized in a digi chain fashion the devices shared an interrupt request line and interrupt technology propagated through the devices okay let us see the combination of priority structure and digi chain scheme it can also be implemented okay here interrupt request one interrupt acknowledgement one interrupt request p interrupt technology p okay so here priority arbitration circuit uh, present in the processor okay so device one device two device three and so on considered as one group and next group okay intr p and intap considered as group p one two p groups are present in this circuit each group is connected at a different priority level okay within a group for example first group having first highest priority next group having next highest priority okay likewise each group is assigned a different priority level so all the devices within a single group are connected in a Daisy chain. This is one group, next group, next group, next group. So, this organization is used in many computer systems. Okay. So, the group which is having a highest priority that will be serviced first and then next group. Like that, processor service all the IO devices based on their priorities. So, this is how processor handles the IO devices based on interrupt request let us move on to the questionnaire slide what is mean by interrupt vector next question which register is used to encode the processor's priority bits and then what is the use of priority arbitration circuit thank you we will meet in next video